Hey guys, it's DJ on with DigitalDJTips.com getting into part two on our series of Touch OSC. In part one, if you remember, we got into how to hook up Touch OSC with your computer and make it work with any software of your choice. Now today we're going to get into custom layouts and how to get them into your device and use them. Which it's rather amusing I'm holding an Android device here because I won't be able to put a custom layout in here. Apparently now the reason came clear why the Android app was free while the iOS app was $4.99. The developers at Hexler.net who made TouchOSC haven't fully perfected this app yet for Android, thus they don't have the function in here to put your own custom layouts. They said until they get the whole thing perfected, it'll stay free, but you're only going to be able to use whatever layouts that they give you. So the only suggestion I can throw out there for you Android users who really want to use TouchOSC on your Android device and you don't want to go out and buy an iPad is to donate $5 to Hexler.net and make sure you send them an email and let them know you have an Android device and you want this app built and perfected for that. It might even also help to give the name and model of what device you're using so they can get an idea of what they're going to be developing for. So it's unfortunate I can't use my, ta my tablet, but I still have my trusty iPhone. So we'll go with that today. Let's get to the computer now and I'll show you how to set up your own layouts. Okay, let's get started here. The first thing you're, of course, going to need is the Touch OSC Editor. It's a downloadable program you can find on Hexler.net. If you go to the article on DigitalDJTips.com, we will have a hyperlink to get it. It comes for both Mac OS, 64 and 32-bit versions of Windows, and even Linux, which is a lot of versatility if you want it. Now, in order to run this program, you need what's called a Java Runtime Environment. I know that sounds complicated, but really it just means you have to go to Sun Microsystems website download what they call the Java Runtime Environment and let it run. Now, I'm not sure if on Mac OS that comes straight because when I tried it at my Mac at work, it just started up. Whereas here at home on Windows, I had to have that installed. I'd also forewarn Windows users, if you have a 64-bit Windows, be sure to download the 64-bit Java Runtime Environment so you can use the 64-bit Touch OSC. I found out the hard way, I have the 32-bit Java Runtime environment, and thus I had to use the 32-bit Touch OSC editor. Moving right along, let's get the program started here. Enlarge the interface a little bit. It's a very simple interface. Um, you can see here, this is obviously probably an iPhone iPod Touch layout, but you can also do an iPad layout if you, have, if you happen to have an iPad. You can also make your uh, layout vertical or horizontal, you know, landscape or portrait if you want to go by graphic design standards. This part here is generally where you're going to see information on what you can name items, edit certain items, and of course control the OSC and MIDI messages that get sent out if you want. I'd say if you're a beginner, try to leave things set at auto, simply because of the fact it will take care of it for you. As you want to go more deeper into this, you maybe want to make a more complicated layout that does something specific then yeah, go ahead and start dabbling with it. Now, right here, this bar here, this is how you can add multiple pages. As you've seen, some of the layouts allow for multiple pages. You simply right click or control click on it. You can add a page, you can remove a page, and even when you're laying out, you can jump between your pages this easily. Now to get other items, you're simply gonna right click or control click on the interface itself, and you get this nice little list of everything out there. I'll go down the list really quickly of what each item does. LED is basically a flashing light. If you want to have a beat marker, a beat meter, something going, something that turns on or off that's independent of a button, then you would use that. They unfortunately don't have um, slider up and down like an EQ type thing. Now label vertical and label horizontal basically serve the purpose of being labels. You, they, they're not push buttons, they don't do anything of that nature. This is more if you want to label things on what is what on your interface. Let's clear off the screen. There's two types of buttons you can use, push buttons and toggle buttons. Now a push button is basically sort of like when you have a, a drum pad or something of that nature and you push the button down but when you release it, it stops. Whereas a toggle pad is more like an on-off switch. So if you want to be able to, let's say, turn on or off a looping function, you'd want to use a toggle. Whereas, let's say you're just wanting to fire off one-shot samples or something, then use the push button. The XY pad, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to basically do all that, 
those kind of effects functions you might want. Now faders, of course, come in uh, vertical and horizontal, depending on your needs. Not much uh, rocket science to that. Same thing with rotary knobs, if for basically vertical or horizontal, since they don't really have a rotate function, you have to use the vertical and horizontal. Now encoders a different story. You might notice this looks like basically any typical uh, rotary. But the difference is while a rotary has a limited amount it can go, this is more if you have an unlimited need for some odd reason. If something you have has a knob which just you can keep turning it and turning it to infinity, that's why you want to use an encoder. You can of course add these handy little things in because yes, Touch OSC can also give you what your battery life is on your device. You can add time signatures in and encode that to work with whatever program. If you want to, let's say, show how much time you have left in the track or how long a sample could be. Now, the multis down here also serve the same purpose as the regular ones, but of course, it gives you the multiple push. This, of course, looks like any drum pad you might be messing with. And it allows you, like over here, you can see how many uh, buttons you want to have. You're not stuck with the five by five if you don't feel like it. You can go four, three, do whatever you want to do with how many buttons you feel. Multi-toggle is the same deal as the multi-push, only now these are all on-off switches. This would be great if you want to build, let's say, uh, APC 20 or APC 40 kind of setup on your iPad. Multi, whoops, multi-XY, you don't see it here, but this will allow you to do, let's say, double touch motions on effects. So if you want to have one access be for one parameter of an effect and another access for another parameter, you could do that. And then of course, multi-faders for in vertical and horizontal. It could be if you wanna just build an EQ setup and just hook everything else up into it. Again, like the buttons, you can go over here and tell how you want to have them set up, how many faders you wanna have showing and like any other fader, if you want it inverted or centered in the way you want it set up. Now, playing with all that in mind, you might begin wondering why the OSC and the MIDI a action. Let's do a quick uh, show of that using a toggle button. So with the toggle button, you lay one in there and you click on it and you get all the properties you want. You can choose what color you want it to be. You can uh, designate in numbers how you want it laid out or just grab it and move it, grab it and make it bigger. Um, but down here, you can like turn off the auto and use their own way of labeling it. Again, as I said, I suggest if you don't know what you're doing, just leave it on because it will basically name things in terms of separation, but also by page. Now, the only reason I tell you to use this, though, is if you want to suddenly start building, let's say, a multiple function where you have certain items mapped for multiple items at the same time, or you want to have multiple controls doing different things, it depends on how complicated you want to go. And then you have the MIDI area, which again, you can designate as it comes down to variables that come up. Again, I suggest if you don't know what you're doing, just leave it be. Now, finally, you might be asking, how are you going to get this thing onto your device? You know, forget about hooking up cables or any of that kind of stuff or dealing with iTunes. They went all the way on this one and built it to easily sync. So when you have your layout, let me just throw something in there. You press sync. Then this window would come up. It's going to first tell you on your device that you have to go to layout and press add. Now how you do that is you're going to go to your device, of course to the options section like we had before, but you're going to go here to layout. Like I mentioned before, you can pick out a layout. In layout, you'll of course see all the layouts that come with the device, but you'll see this add button here. When you press that, It'll then say if it found a host or anywhere on your device. In this case, it's found my desktop. Once you select that, it will basically sync up with it and bring it right in. Then you'll basically go to the ads. You'll basically go back to where you have your layouts and you'll find your uh, device in there. Your, I mean, sorry, your layout in there. And from there, you just simply pick it, map it to your device like I showed you in part one and you're set to go. That wasn't that easy. All it takes now is your sense of creativity. I actually invite you, if you come up with any interesting layouts, to save them out as a file and attach it onto a post. Put it on our message board and share the love. For DigitalDJTips.com, I'm DJM. Thanks for joining us.